A few hundred yards from Silwood House itself is the University of London Reactor Centre. Although funded by the university, it's staffed and run by 17 members of Imperial College. The reactor was designed jointly by members of the Mekeng Department of IC and General Electric Company. It's one of only four university reactors in the country and began operation in 1965. The building directly behind me was built in 1971 and houses radiochemistry and physics laboratories and office workshop and study accommodation. One of the six academic staff at the reactor centre is Dr McMahon, a physics lecturer. Dr McMahon, could you tell me first of all, why does the university need a reactor? What's it used for? Well, the university uses the reactor for teaching purposes mainly and research in many fields of neutron physics and reactor physics. And it's also used for the production of isotopes and for neutron activation analysis. Those are the main uses. So it's, is it used for demonstrating to students? Yes, we have many students coming to visit the reactor centre from many of the main colleges of London University. Uh, these are mainly physics students, but also include engineering students and chemistry students who come and carry out experiments at the reactor centre mm -hmm. and get them they get some experience then of uh, working with neutrons and gamma rays and become familiar with the techniques of, of using radioisotopes. Mm -hmm. And there's some research going on here as well, isn't there? Yes, we have about 11 or 12 of our own research students who are carrying out research in, uh, in several fields. Again, the most important one is neutron activation analysis, where many materials are analysed using neutron activation which is rather sensitive for many elements and such fields include geology, medicine, biology, mm -hmm. environmental studies, they that all use activation analysis. That enables you to tell what different substances are there? Is it? Yes, when you activate material in the reactor it becomes, when you bombard it with neutrons it becomes radioactive and when we look at the gamma rays emitted from the radioactive sample after radiation we can tell what's present and how much of it is present and for some elements it's very sensitive. What type of reactor is it? It's uh, a water-cooled, water-moderated reactor. It's small in reactor terms. It's, uh, the power is only 100 kilowatts and uh, the power itself isn't used for anything. We only use it as a teaching and research tool. Mm -hmm. And it's unusual in that you can actually look into the core while it's operating, can't you? You can. It is a pool-type reactor and you can look into the pool and you can see the Cherenkov radiation which is produced when the reactor is operating. What causes that? The Chernkov radiation is produced by the beta particles which are emitted from the fission products. These beta particles travel through the water faster than light travels in water. And you get a sort of visual counterpart of a sonic boom, a visual mm. boom, let's say. The blue glow. Which is the blue Chernkov glow. Yeah. Yes. Samples to be irradiated are sent into the reactor for a period of time. and then loaded into a pneumatic delivery system which allows the sample to be analysed seconds after it leaves the reactor. One experiment using neutron activation analysis is being carried out by Chris Sollers, a PhD student with the Public Health and Water Resources Engineering section of Civil Engineering. He is investigating possible sources of bromide ions, which may be a health hazard, in drinking water collected in lowland areas, since these will probably be used more extensively in the future. He is analysing runoff from the M1 to see whether the ethylene dibromide put into petrol is a source of contamination. <laughs> 